above 1,100 tons of microplastics are estimated to be present in the atmosphere of the western U.S. Fully understanding the presence, causes, and impacts of microplastics, our group has decided to plan and carry out an innovative solution to decrease the amount of microplastics, especially in oceans. Pleasure. My name is Sherry and I'm the leader of this group. I'm currently a 10th grade student studying in Synonymous World Academy and I have a great passion in the STEM field. Biomedicine, biology, life sciences, you name it, because I all love it. And beside me is my partner. Greetings, I am Jay Kim, a 9th grader in Synonymous World Academy with an implacable aspiration to become a doctor and ameliorate world health. Flexible in both the STEM field and social arts, I am especially ambitious in studying medicine and biology. 40% of plastic waste enters water bodies. Following the water current, they are broken down into smaller pieces. By the time plastic pieces are caught up by ocean gyres and meet with the garbage patches, they are mostly turned into microplastics, which are tiny plastic particles less than 5 mm in size. Zooplankton often mistake microplastics for phytoplankton, their food, and consume them. As the microplastics are carried up the food chain or organisms ingest them, they may die of suffocation and starvation. If humans consume organisms that carry microplastics, they may also face health effects such as neurotoxicity and cancer. Another hazard of microplastics is that as they are non-biodegradable, light, and small in size, they can easily be carried by the wind, polluting other water bodies and directly entering the human respiratory system. Whether you know it or not, genetic modification is all around us. Perhaps they'll see those grapes that you have laying around on your countertop, laying in your fridge. They'll see those grapes would not have been possible without genetic modification, which is amazing. So let's think about it. What if we decide to use genetic modification in order to reduce the amount of microplastics that we have concentrated in our marine wildlife? So let's take a look at our proposed solution. A bacteria was discovered by Kohei Oda of the Kyoto Institute of Technology's Kohei Oda. We encounter so many bacteria, so what is so special about this one? The extreme durability of polyethylene terephthalate, PET, otherwise known as plastic, has rendered in a long-term environmental burden as recycling efforts lack sustainability and effectiveness. This bacteria is able to consume PET and convert it into its own carbon source. The official name of this bacterium is called Adionella psychiensis 201F6. Adionella psychiensis is able to degrade PET through hydrolyzing ester bonds present in PET, otherwise known as splitting these chemical bonds into smaller molecules through secreting two types of enzymes called petase and metase. These smaller molecules will be able to be absorbed as food for the bacteria. So, a research was conducted. What if we genetically modify bacteria present in the fish's gut to obtain the same characteristics as bacteria Idionella psychiensis, so that it is able to prevent microplastic cluttering as well as act as a medium to reduce microplastics in our ocean? Namely, the bacteria will be able to convert the consumed microplastics and use it as its own carbon source for respiration. The chosen bacteria is called Vibro, as it is naturally present in the fish's gut. The chosen fish is called the bristlemouth fish. Bristlemouth fishes are known to be widely populated throughout the ocean and is mostly located in the deep waters, which is where microplastics are mostly located. This gives a promising effect of this plant. Although there are certain limitations such as the slow conversion of plastic into energy, this research conducted has still shown a promising starting point for effective marine conservation. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, thank you for your time, and have a wonderful day.